Hey, it's Coach with Tactical Hive, and I'm not on the range today again. This is part two when we're talking about high value optics. Part one, we talked about red dots, and now we're moving to the low power variable optics and low power prism optics. There's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of high end stuff. All those high end characteristics that we're looking for, you know, the best quality glass, the waterproofness, the robustness, and the long battery life. It's all the same stuff. Now, when I started with the powered optics, because basically for the first half of my career, we were running around with iron sights. And then we moved into, well, let's see, I went to Green Team in 95, and that was the first aim point that I ever put on a gun. All right, so red dots are awesome for doing what you do out to two, 300 yards. But now if you want some magnification, so you actually tell, you know, I can hit a guy with a red dot at three, 400 yards. That's not a problem, but can I, you know, identify him as a threat at that distance? Is that a broom handle or a, an AK that he's got in his hand? Well, in order to see that, you need to have a powered optic. So the first optic that uh, we started working with was this Trigicon ACOG, all right? It's a four power prism sight, uh, waterproof, just almost damn indestructible and really high quality glass. So you can steer through this thing all day long. I mean, it's, it's real comfortable. The cons to this is the eye relief is really tight. And the trade-off for that is you get a lot of more uh, field of, of vision uh, at range and price. Okay, they're heavy, they're expensive, but again, really good. Now, when you get close in, well, we started mounting the red dot on top. So at close range, I can still have an effective sight. It's hard, you know, a four power optic running through. Now, they started out, they used to have a, what they call a rain sight on, on top here. There's little bosses right here and they had a little uh, notch rear sight. And here's your little, you know, front sight that was on there. I could never really use that worth a crap. So the red dot was is so much better, so much faster. So stacking those together, you know, you're gonna pay top dollar for this kind of setup. And this is an older ACOG, but you know, the newer ones, uh, oh, they've got the fiber optic and a lot of other cool stuff, All right? But so this is your high end, and to duplicate that, this one here is a primary arms. This is a 5X prism sight. And again, it's got a little spot, a little uh, rail mount on top here. Came in the design to uh, to put your, your red dot optic on there. You're now moved into the $300-ish for the, uh, the powered optic. And you can get miniature red dots anywhere from, you know, two to $400 range that will give you a decent performance. One of the reasons I like to have the prism side, especially on the SCAR, is SCARs are notorious for beating up optics. So this thing is tough as nails. And again, I, I haven't done it, but I've seen other guys on YouTube do torture tests on these things, freezing them and just bashing the hell out of them. I trust it, okay? And uh, it's been on this for a couple of years now and has shown no signs of, uh, of wearing out. So that's your primary arms, 5X. On the new Virtus, this is the Vortex. It's 5X as well, and it's a much smaller package. So, and again, you know, running around 500 bucks, you're getting, you know, it's got a bullet drop uh, compensating etched reticle. It's a good sight. And then it has a uh, place specifically to mount your red dot on top of there. So these things get smaller and lighter, you know, what's not to like about those, right? So this is a really good option uh, that I'm starting to play with here. We'll talk about how it's mounted and stuff in another video, but right now for the price, for the size and weight, this is probably one of the best ones, uh, I think, you know, your, your highest value optics on the market, All right? So primary arms, this is your 3X. Again, you get your, uh, you know, spot for your red dot, all that built in. I tend to put these on, mounted on a throw lever. So, you know, if, if this does fail, 
which it hasn't, but if it did, I need to be able to get it off and be able to deploy my, uh, my backup iron. When you're using a powered optic, it's important, you know, with a red dot, I like having a fixed front sight, but with a powered optic, that fixed front sight will give you that annoying shadow, you know, in your vision a lot of times, especially if it's mounted a little bit lower like this one. So having it, that's ideally when you want to have your folding uh, front sight. So again, we're talking about a, a $300, you know, and it, these, uh, they don't have quite the, uh, the field of view at range, but they do have a much more forgiving eye box. So you don't have to be, there's not that critical eye relief that you have to get on, all right? So you can have a little bit of leeway there. And you never know what's gonna be happening. So having a little bit of option is, is, is pretty good. Moving into, uh, there's your low power variable on the old EBR here. This is a Vortex uh, Strike Eagle. Good, decent sight. It's Vortex. Vortex makes some awesome stuff. They're tough uh, and they're reasonably priced. This one here, you know, again, it doesn't have the same effect as the prism sight with a red dot on top, but you can put this thing down to one X and basically run around, you know, as, it's kind of like a red dot, but there is some, it's, it's not as free, okay? You have to have your eye behind there, you know, in the right spot. You'll get some, some scope shadow if you're too far back or too far, uh, you know, too close. Um, so it's not true. And the other thing is if you uh, have to go and, and, you know, you got your throw lever up here, but you have to physically reach up here and turn something. Whereas with the stacked optic, or, you know, all you're doing is run around with a chin weld, seeing my red dot, and then if I need to, you know, identify something at range, I'm just moving down to a cheek weld, get my eye behind the, uh, the optic, and, uh, you know, identify my target and take the longer shot if I have to. This one, you have to physically get up here and, and actually move something. So, you know, again, I'm not saying anything plus or minus about it. It's, you know, these are decisions that you're gonna have to make uh, when you select your optics. Moving into, you know, slightly longer range. And this is a 5.56, but we've got the, uh, this is a primary arms, four to 14, and it's got the ACSS reticle, all right? So basically it's a ranging reticle, so, I'm not going to be really spinning dials with this one. I'm going to set it, get my good battle sight zero, and then by looking at the reticle, uh, it's got a bunch of circles along the side there, and that equates to a 10 inch circle at whatever range. Okay, so eh, you put a guy's head in that circle, and then just roll over to the crosshairs, and you can that's you're, you're at the, the proper elevation for the range. It's got windage adjustments and little you know, marks for moving targets and, and all that. So that if you don't wanna be spinning dials, this is the kind of, of reticle I would suggest. Because I'm, I'm not a big long range guy. I mean, I shoot occasionally, but for me, I don't have all that calculations in my head like uh, you know some sniper friends of mine do. You know, they're a bit, tweaked anyway, but I'm able to, to just use this one. It's simpler on my old brain, okay? You know, hey, line it up, okay, that, that makes sense. Mm. And then I'm just doing every, all my calculations are done through the, uh, the scope, okay? So there's your primary arms, and again, they're south of 300 bucks. I'm gonna go for long range, or longer range. This is 308, and it's a, a my SIG Cross, and this is a, uh, Arkin Optics, I think this one's uh, 4 to 16 by 50. So it's got good light gathering capability. Arkin Optics is uh, either, there, there, there's a frogman involved, okay? So this one, you know, I bought before I knew there was a frogman involved, so I didn't get any discounts, but I, he's since uh, sent me another one. So there is a connection with him, all right? But if he made crap, I wouldn't be reviewing it on video, okay? So this is, he makes good stuff. The optical quality, it, I don't know how he does it because it's it's really good. You can look through this and you can look through other high-end uh, optics and you know, the difference isn't enough really for, 
for me to see. And I think this one is about a $500 optic. So, yeah. Again, you're gonna be spinning dials with this and there's a number of different reticles that are available um, you know, to work with. But yeah, when you, you start getting the, the longer range stuff, it starts getting more and more expensive. Arkin, so far, you know, of all the, uh, the optics that I've been messing with, they're, they're right up there um, and you're really high quality for, uh, for the price. So that's kind of an overview on, uh, on the different considerations when you're looking at high value optics. And like I always said, you know, I, I got nothing against high end stuff. If you're buying one and you know, you, you need those characteristics, then hey, spend your money. But if I can get a number of scopes for the same amount as it would take to get one really high end one and they'll still work for me, it just makes sense. You know, I got a lot of guns. If I'm gonna put a lot of glass on it, you know, I don't got a lot of money. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm looking for the highest value that I can get. I just wanted to share that with you. And if you like this content, like, subscribe, leave me a comment.